Sup, this is Rich Finelli, front end developer and author at richfinelli.com. This is video number 14 in the Handlebars video training course, which is now a total of 15 videos, oddly enough, uh, even though this one is numbered 14, on Handlebars JS, the minimal templating engine. In this video, we're going to learn about partials. Uh, we're going to create reusable Handlebars partial templates. So this is our current issue. We have an index.html file and a cast details file. Both of them have a slightly different character template. On the details page there's a bio that's not on the index page and on the index page there's you know a slightly different anchor than on the details page. But one thing they both have in common is this character details. The guts of each character is exactly the same. So now the problem we're facing is if I need to change something, I need to do it in two places. And I really don't like doing that. It's not dry, we're repeating ourselves. it's error prone, all the things we don't like. So a partial template can potentially solve this problem for us. So let's go ahead and start creating one. First thing we'll do is we'll switch back to just one window pane and we'll cut this character details template out, this div really. And we'll say partial template here comment that out. And then down below our character template, let's create a new script tag and we'll give it an ID and we'll make the ID equal to character details partial and the type will be exactly the same as our full template. We'll call it text slash x dash handlebars template. And inside of there, we'll paste in our div, our character details div. So that's looking pretty good. Let's just clean it up real quick and save that. So now before we can actually use this here and on the cast details page, we have to go and register it. So registering a partial template is a lot like registering a helper. We're going to come in and we're going to say handlebars dot register partial and it takes two arguments. The first argument is going to be the name of the template. So we'll say we'll call it character details partial. The second argument is going to be the actual reference to the template itself. So we can do that using jQuery pretty simply. We'll just say character details partial and then we want the HTML. So we'll say dot HTML. That's very similar to how we got the character template. We did the same thing. We just referenced it by the ID and said .html. So now the partial is registered in our scripts.js file. So now back in index.html, what we can do, first let's just make sure that we're not getting our guts, our details. So let's re refresh the page and we can see, okay, they're not there. Now let's go back and let's add in the partial. The way you add a partial is you use the same double curly brace syntax and then you start with a greater than sign and then you reference the partials name character details partial now that's not the ID that we used that refers to when we registered the partial the name we gave it we said character details partial now it's no coincidence I like to keep the name of the partial and the ID of the script tag to be the same character details partial for both. However, I'm using the camel case syntax for the name and for the ID I'm using the dash um, dash delimited syntax. I forget what that's called. The reason being is usually classes and IDs I use dashes and then JavaScript stuff I use camel case. That's just the convention I'm used to. You don't have to do that but I found that when you make these the same it's easier to kind of understand where where your partial lives and what partial you're referring to. You don't have to end it with partial. I do that though because I want to know that okay this is a partial. Now you will know that it's a partial because if you know that okay well all things with the greater than are partials but this just makes it extra clear and when coding I value readable code over short code. But let's make sure this works so let's go in let's refresh it okay and we get our guts. So that's that's well and good. But on our details page, okay, we're not working. So let's because we didn't add anything there. So let's go to the details page and let's copy this script and let's remove this here and we'll add in the partial character details partial and then down here we'll add in our reference to that partial. So now 
it works. We're getting our partial template. Very good. But there's one gigantic elephant in the room. We had to include the script, our character details partial, on both the cast details page and the index.html page. So we really didn't solve our problem at all. Really didn't solve anything. Um, we just kind of moved our code around uh, and maybe even complicated it more. Um, so at this point, you know, we're, we're still in the same hole we were before. Kind of the, so, and I did that on purpose because I feel like it's an easy trap to get yourself in. You, you know that, okay, Handlebars does these things called partials. Let's use a Handlebars partial. Um, so we can have the same template used on multiple pages. But I don't know if that's the best solution. I think partials are really better when you need to use a block of HTML on the same page more than once. So maybe in the same template, I need to have a second, let's say, you know, a second reference to that same partial in the same template, or maybe you have two templates on the same page that both get the same partial. I think that's where you get the most value out of handlebars partials. So you can see in this case, yeah, it looks like junk, but I'm able to use this partial in two places on the same page. Uh, so again, even though it looks like junk, it does exactly what I needed to do, keeping my code dry. So I think if you're going to, you know, if you're in the situation I'm in, where you need to have the same template on two different pages, probably the best way to do it is instead use your server side code for things like this. Use um, an include, uh, if you will, where you put this chunk of code in a separate file, an HTML file, and then you do something like if you're, okay, well, if you're in .NET world using the razor syntax, you can do render page, you know, character details, partial, .html. If you're in PHP world, you could do PHP include character details, partial, .php. I think that would be the ideal solution because you don't even need to use a handlebars partial at all. I would just take this chunk of HTML, you know, don't include the script tag, just the div, put that in a separate file, and then just go get it um, using your server side code. Now, in our scenario, though, let's say you're building a prototype like we are, um, and there is no server, there is no server side code where you don't want to write it, or you don't know how to write it. Well, if you know how to write JavaScript, well, the one thing we can do is we can kind of Ajax it in. So this is kind of a little hacky, um, but let's just do it because it'll be fun to do and it'll, it'll solve our problem. So let's go into uh, a new file here and we'll copy our script. We'll save it and we'll call it character partial, uh, character details partial. HTML. We'll just save it in the root for now. Normally you might have like a views folder or a partials folder or an includes folder, but we'll save it in the root for, for fun here. And now we can go to our script. So we leave our partial here. So we still got that there. And now we can go into here and we can say, all right, well, right before we Ajax in our JSON, let's Ajax in our, our character details partial. So we can do something like dollar sign dot Ajax, and then we can go and get our character details dash partial dot HTML. And then when that's done, we can grab it. Okay, and we'll just call it, I like to be really specific. So I'm, instead of like calling it data or template, I'm going to call it car, car details template. And what we can do here is we can just say dollar sign body. We'll just append it to the end of the body tag. Append and then we'll say care details partial. So all we're doing here is we're just ajaxing that HTML file to the bottom of our page to the bottom of our body tag. The one thing we will need to do is we're registering this partial up here and we're looking for that HTML ahead of time. So if we're Ajaxing it in down here, we don't want to register the partial until after it's on the page. So, so we can come right here and we can register the partial. So we're putting it on the page, then we're registering it, and then we're doing our Ajax call for everything else. So let's see if that works. And let's clean up our index page, make sure, okay, we get rid of this second partial template. 
and wow, that actually works. So, so now we're getting that template and we're Ajaxing it in before we're doing any of our other stuff. And then handlebars is coming in and using that partial. So now what we can do is on the cast details page, we can get rid of this script too. So we're just using the partial and we go to our view details page, we're getting that same partial. So that was, I think that was slightly hacky to Ajax in the partial onto the page. At the same time, if you're, if you're building a prototype and you still want to maintain some dry code and you don't want to repeat those templates in more than one place on two different pages, this is probably a good technique, especially if it's a prototype. In the real world, I, I, I think that you know, when you're using server-side code, you probably just want to use your programming languages include ability. Partials, though, I think their real sweet spot is when you're using the same partial template on one page in more than one spot. I think that's the total sweet spot for handlebar partials. Uh, but that's just me. So that concludes our handlebars video training course. We did a lot here, um, too much to kind of even recap. I think by now, uh, if you've watched all these videos, that's about all I can tell you about handlebars. Uh, if you like my style of teaching and, uh, and also you're interested in CSS, something totally different, but still a front-end technology, uh, I invite you to check out mastering-css.com. 38 videos, 180 minutes, of learning about CSS and really mastering it. How to create tricky UI elements like a, a navigation that you know folds into a hamburger and drops down for mobile. Everything you need to know about responsive web design, CSS animations, transforms, transitions, retina display, how to handle images for retina, uh, and so much more. It's a it's a really put my heart and soul into that course, and it's a lot more highly produced than this. This is I'm just kind of doing at my house. But the uh, this 38 video training course on mastering CSS, uh, I partnered with Pact Publishing and they really you know highly edited them and really kind of made them like really good. So if you're interested in that, check out mastering-css.com. If not, I'm just glad you enjoyed this handlebars video training course. I had a lot of fun making it. I really did. And uh, you can always check me out over at richfinelli.com where I create more videos and training on front-end web development. Thank you so much, and uh, goodbye.